Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to A Modern Nation. For today's video, we're gonna be taking our tops off. No, 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 no. You'll recall last week that I did an overclocking tutorial on the 6700K processor. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch it by clicking up here. But during that video, I talked about possibly doing what's called a delitting tutorial. There's a limit to how much higher we can go in our overclock. We're really limited by the processor itself. Unless we decide to do a delitting tutorial. Yep, that's exactly what I said. So here we are today. I'm gonna to be doing a delitting tutorial for the Skylake 6700K processor. The reason why I'm doing a delitting video is because the Skylake is notorious for having very bad thermal paste. All right, so here is a desktop processor. This one happens to be a Broadwell processor, but the properties of the Skylake Lake and the Broadwell processor are very similar. They both have what's called an internal heat spreader on the top here. This isn't the actual chip. The chip is actually underneath. What this heat spreader does is exactly what the name suggests. It spreads the heat out, the heat that's transferred from the die to this heat spreader. However, between the internal heat spreader and your die, there is a small gap. In this case, it's filled with a thermal paste. It's not the best thermal paste when it comes to conducting heat, and that's why we're doing this video. We're gonna change that. A few last things before we begin. Here's a list of processors that you can delid by following this tutorial. Other processors actually have the internal heat spreader soldered to the die itself, which would require a different tutorial from this one. Also, I think it goes without mentioning that by following this tutorial, you will be voiding your warranty. Hopefully this procedure works, and if it doesn't, like this video and subscribe. I'm doing it for the YouTube views. I can't believe I'm destroying a $300 processor. I'm going to be replacing the paste inside of the processor with this Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut. This thermal paste is very similar to Cool Laboratory's Liquid Ultra Metal Paste. It's highly conductive and it's produced fantastic results. But before we begin adding this thermal paste, we need to do a baseline test to see what our beginning temperatures are. And so in order to do that, I had to remove the thermal paste that was on the processor and add the conductor not thermal paste. Conductonaut comes with its own alcohol pads, which is nice. So I went ahead and used them to wipe down the processor. And I just wasted all the thermal paste. Well, f me, right? This stuff does not spread like normal thermal paste, but if you press down with enough force, you can get it to move around. Ooh, shiny. So I loaded the processor up into my Maximus 8 Gene motherboard. I used a custom version of X264 to stress the CPU. Links are down in the video description below. After overclocking my processor to 4.7 GHz at 1.42 volts, the average temperature was 71.75 degrees. Now that we have our baseline temperature, let's rip that processor apart carefully. I'm using a fresh razor blade to get underneath the internal heat spreader. The name of the game is to go slowly. You don't want to rush this part. You want to press the razor blade in, but up as well. If you go downwards, you have a tendency to scrape the PCB, in which case you could say goodbye to your PCI Express lens. This person managed to damage the die, and this person used the vice method, which is not recommended for the Skylake processor. It takes some time, but I finally managed to get the razor underneath the internal heat spreader. I'm slowly pushing it in. You can see it making its way underneath. You can even see the razor bend as I'm pushing it in. You want to be firm with the pressure on the blade, but you don't want to force the blade too much. I recommend starting with the corners and then working the sides, but how you begin is up to you. Twist the top off like a Snapple and you've got yourself a delitted processor. You can see that yucky thermal paste on there, but no more, it's cleanup time. I'm gonna be switching out my razor blade for a plastic razor blade instead. These will allow me to scrape this silicone off of the processor without damaging the PCB. I could use a credit card instead for this process, but I think I've risked enough money on this project as it is. I'm using the Art to Clean 2 step process to clean up the dye. You know what works surprisingly well to clean up silicone? Fingernails. I didn't know that. Let's have a moment of silence for some beautiful B-roll. Shh. 
I applied the floating lid method and put the internal heat spreader back on top without using adhesive. I recommend holding the internal heat spreader in place while you press the lever down to lock the processor in place. More thermal paste was added and the water cooler was reattached before running a stress test. The final average temperature was 55.25 degrees. It's time to get out your calculators, kids. Before deleting the processor, we had an average temperature of 71.75 degrees. And after deleting the processor, 55.25 degrees. That's a difference of 16.5 degrees. Holy smokes. So in conclusion, after deleting our processor, we achieved 15 more degrees of coolness at an overclock of 4.7 gigahertz. I consider this a job well done. But wait a minute, didn't Linus Tech Tips do this exact same thing with a Skylake 6700K? They only got three degrees difference. Let's talk about some of the reasons why I achieved a different result from other YouTubers. First, let's talk pace. Now, Linus used something called Maker Gel, which I can only assume is Cooler Master's Master Gel Maker. This is actually a respectable thermal pace. As you can see from this chart, it competes well with Thermo Grizzly's Cryo Nod and is only a few degrees warmer than Cool Laboratory's Liquid Ultra Metal Paste. Jabauer went with a Thermo Grizzly Cryo Knot and spread his paste out on the chip. Linus didn't spread his thermal paste, even though the instructions said to, but we know from testing that that shouldn't make much of a difference anyway. Speaking of things that don't matter, can we talk about this chart for a second? You've got T, A, and N brand competitors, which I can't find any record of, followed by some arbitrary whole numbers that ascend in equal amounts that I can only assume are measured in degrees Celsius. What the hell is this? Don't get me wrong, I love the Half 932, and I'm a big fan of the Hyper 212 Plus, but Cooler Masters, seriously. Linus also used Ada 64 Extreme Full Suite to run his stress test, which I talked about in my overclocking video. Ada 64 is known for not stressing a processor out as much as other benchmarking tools. Using settings very similar to mine, a 4.7 GHz overclock at 1.4 volts, we discover that Ada 64 is about 7.6 degrees cooler than the custom X264. I did notice something peculiar in his Ada 64 run. Linus is running an unlocked processor at stock voltage. Chalkboard, please. We know from our overclocking video that the more voltage we apply, the more heat that will be generated. So the more that we push the CPU, the more heat that needs to be dissipated. However, if you're running the processor at stock, you aren't generating that much heat. There's not as much heat to dissipate at stock setting. We know that CPU temperatures are limited by the thermal conductivity between the die and the internal heat spreader. In this diagram, we need a thermal paste to fill the gaps between our heat source, the dye, and our heat sink. Filling these spaces with a more heat conductive thermal paste will facilitate greater heat transfer away from the processor and toward our heat sink. When we overvolt the processor in the form of overclocking, we generate more heat than stock, resulting in greater heat dissipation away from the processor, resulting in lower temperatures after deleting. So if we don't overclock, you won't see any benefit. I could have just said that, but you deserved an explanation. So when Linus says, what you do not get is enough for it to make any kind of significant difference to your overclock or the lifespan of your chip if you're using air or water cooling. Deliting is for advanced users only. It does come with its inherent risks, but I assure you it is well worth it. I hope you enjoyed this shorter video. And if you did, make sure you give me a like and share it with somebody that you think would enjoy this video as well. Leave me a comment down in the comment section letting me know, have you deleted a processor before? And if you have, what sort of results did you get? Join the nation by clicking on that subscribe button below. And when you do, make sure you click on the bell icon so it lets you know the minute I upload new YouTube videos. And as always, you can reach me at one of these social medias here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.